Hey yogis, I'm Rachel Soon and I'm here to guide you today's flow class designed to be accessible for everyone, especially if you're a beginner. So whether you're new to yoga, um, trying to kickstart your yoga journey, or simply looking to build a regular practice, this one's for you. So just get ready your yoga mat, of course, and have a block or two blocks handy by the side at the top of your mat. Have a towel ready as well to wipe down your sweat, and definitely a knee pad if you have wonky knees, but that's optional. Once you have all these set up just like that, we'll get started. So wherever you are, come to the top of the mat, feet about hip width distance apart. And as we inhale, start to lengthen, draw the arms up to the sky, look up. When you exhale, hands to your heart center as you welcome yourself to the mat. Inhale once again, arms up to the sky, look up to the sky. And as you exhale, start to bow down, bend your knees until your fingers touch the mat. As you inhale, hands to your knees or she can take a flat back. Think of this like a number seven. Belly in, chest forward. And release, hands back down to the mat. Again, bending your knees so your fingers can touch the mat. Take a big step back with your right leg. Right knee down. Come to our first pose, low lunge. Both arms up to the sky as you inhale. Long, lengthen through the sides of the body. And as you exhale, sink the hips down, driving the right thigh down and forward. Release hands back down to the mat. Lift the back knee up. Step the left leg back. Downward facing dog as you lift the hips, thighs pushing back. Shoulders pressing to the back of the mat. Your chest pushing towards your thighs. Downward facing dog. In your first downward dog, keep a soft bend in your knees so you have the space to lift the hips up higher and press the sit bones back. The right leg start to step forward. Lower your back knee down. Low lunge on the side as you lift both hands up to the sky, looking up. Once again, inhale, lengthen through your fingertips and use your exhale, sing the hips down. Release both hands down. Step the left foot next to the right. Back to where we started as we exhale to fold. Inhale, root to rise. Keep your arms all the way up to the sky. Lengthen. As we exhale, coming down again, hands towards the mat. Softly bending your knees whenever you need. Half lift, hands sliding to your knees or shin. Take a flat back, shoulders away from the ears. Release hands back down. Left leg step back this time. Left knee down. Come back to your low lunge. Both hands up, curling your back toes under, lifting up the chest. Keep the hips going down, pressing through the front foot. And as you exhale, both palms back down. Back knee up. Right leg step back to meet your left. Lifting the hips back, downward facing dog. Slowly to lift the heels slightly higher as you bend your knees once again. Biceps in line with your ear. So think about driving those shoulders and armpits to the back of your mat as you stretch up your chest, your upper body. And when you're ready, lift the heels up. Left foot step forward. Lower the back knee down. Changing side this time as you inhale, arms up to the sky. Open up the torso. Driving once again the hips down nicely towards the front of the mat. And as you exhale, both palms back down. Step forward to meet your left. And exhale, folding, draping the torso over your thigh. Root to rise once again. Inhale, sweep your arms all the way up. Looking up through your fingertips. And exhale, hands back to heart center. One more round. Inhale, arms up to the sky. And exhale to fold. Half lift, hands to the knees or shin, shoulders relax. Exhale, palms back down. Right leg, big step back. Right knee down. Both hands up once again. An open twist to the right side. So right hand back, left hand forward. Keep the back toes tight. Keep the right thigh pressing down and forward. Open up the chest. Then as you exhale, cartwheel both hands back down. Lift the back knee, left leg back. Plank pose. So in your plank pose, Wriggle the feet back, allow the shoulders to step over the wrists, squeeze the thighs in, high in your tippy toes as you move forward. Belly pulls in, nice and strong in your plank. We'll go through a vinyasa, lower the knees down, chest chin down as you exhale, so bend the elbows close in, untuck your toes, scoop your tailbone, think about rolling, sliding the body forward, straightening the arms as much as you can without hunching the shoulders up, slow the shoulders down. Open up the chest. And as you exhale, tuck your toes under. Lift the hips back. Nice and high back to downward facing dog. 
right leg big, step forward as far as you can, lower the back knee down, now notice my front leg in all my lunges, always 90 degrees, so think knee just above the ankle, otherwise slide the right foot forward, both hands back up once again, we'll twist once again to the right side, so this is a close twist, a little harder to twist, but try as much as you can, perhaps slightly bending the elbows to guide yourself to twist even more. The more you lengthen the body, the more weight you have to hold in your core. So if this is too much for you today, maybe a cactus arms can help you to twist even further. Breathe, take one more breath here. And as you exhale, both palms back down, step forward and fold as you exhale. Inhale, sweep your arms all the way up, looking up. Once again, coming all the way down as you exhale, going for our second round, half lift, inhale. And exhale, palms down, left leg big step back, left knee down, both hands up. Once again, inhale, we're going to twist to the left side, left hand stretch back, right hand forward. Notice if you're starting to lose balance, again, right foot generously move forward, so you have a bit more space, ground to the front foot, and cartwheel both hands forward. Right leg big step back, back to plank pose. So take a few moments to readjust. Your wrist below the shoulders, fingertips pressing down. Lift high on the heels, belly pulls in. Knees, chest, chin. Once again, untuck your toes. Slide forward, take your cobra. Belly pulling up. So to allow the shoulders to come down, perhaps bending the elbows so that you can let the lower back breathe, open up, gazing up. And then slowly pushing back, tuck your toes, lift the hips and thighs back, downward facing up. Left leg this time, big step forward, right knee down, both hands up. And again, adjust if you need to, crawl that left foot forward and then press through the left big toe. Open up to the left side once again, finding that twist. Think about that right rib cage wanting to twist more to the left side. Perhaps bend the elbows if that helps you in your cactus arms. Right elbow push forward, left elbow push back. One more breath here, inhale. And as you exhale, hands coming down, right foot step forward to meet your left, and exhale to fold. Ground down firmly to your feet, inhale, root to rise. Once again, sweep your arms up, and exhale, hands back to heart center. Alright, moving from our sun A, inhale once again, arms up, lengthen through the sides of the body and exhale, folding from your hips, reaching down to the floor. Half lift, hands to your knees or shift. Release palms down, right leg back, left leg back, plank position again. Now you have the option, either knees chest chin or knees down. Take a half chaturanga, think like a half push up as you bend your elbows, now keep the elbows squeezing into your ribs. Then untuck your toes, rolling forward to that cobra pose. And then downward facing dog, tuck your toes. Lift the hips up, back to downward facing dog. Roll forward, back to plank position. So if your hips are super high this way, wriggle the feet back. Wriggle, wriggle, wriggle. Until you have the hips in line with your shoulders. That's where you know you're in a nice plank position. You feel the core working. Now we're not going to hold here. Anymore, we're going to lower the knees down, like a tabletop position, so walk the knees slightly forward, keep the knees below your hips, extend the right leg back, the right toes down, your right heel swivel inwards, so the right toes are pointing to the long edge of the mat. Now your left toes, the one that you're curling under, move the left foot towards the left side, and from here, sweep the right arm up, coming to our gate pose variation. Here, you might want to keep your right hand on your hip if this is too much for you. Otherwise, keep the right arm extending as your next option. And the last option, right arm sweep over the ear. Full extension in the right side of the body. Now at all times, keep grounding the right foot down firmly. And then lift the hips, pushing the hips forward as you stretch the front part of your torso. Stay here, hold for three. Stay here, hold for two. Last one, right hand on your hip. Then push into your left palm, come all the way up. Take a few moments here. Lift the hands all the way up to the sky. Right hand onto the right arm. Keep your left arm next to your and side stretch to the right side. This time we're getting the extension in the left side of the body. Sometimes we might be caving the top shoulder forward. So think about rolling the top shoulder back. 
keep that body nicely facing towards the long edge of the mat. Continue to trickle the right fingertips down, breathing. Just take that one more breath here. Good, and then from here, lift the torso back up, both hands up to the sky. Now activate your core a little bit more, so pull the ribcage up, lean forward. Now imagine there's a block between your palms, so try not to let the lower hand come down. Keep it close to your ear, and then stretch and lengthen. And at the same time, again, press the right foot down, even the pinky toe. You want to round it down to the mat. And then lengthen and stretch and hold for three. If you can go lower, why not go slightly lower for two. Last one. Now look down, left hand down to the mat. Keep the right arm as is. Start to lift the right leg off. So now we come into what we have, baby half moon. So look towards that right toes. Instead of pointing, can you flex? So flex it towards your face, squeeze your right glute and kick through the right outer thigh. That's where some of you might start to feel this part shaking, which is good because it means you're working hard, you're activating the right muscles, we'll stay for three, we'll stay for two, and maybe play around with your eye gaze, start to shift your eye gaze to the side, and you'll take one more, and finally release, right foot down, right palm down, both knees back in, back to tabletop, reset here. Let's take three rounds of cat cow, stretching the spine. So inhale, start to knock the belly down, chest forward, chin up. As you exhale, think around the spine, pull the belly in, this is your angry cat pose. Keep pushing to the mat. Two more, inhale, drop the belly. Chest forward, chin up. Exhale, go the other way, round the tailbone in, chin to chest, look towards your thigh. One last, inhale, cow pose. Shoulders pull away from the gas, open up the throat. Exhale, once again, pushing into the mat. Feel the upper shoulder bit spreading, and then come back to neutral. All right, we'll go over to your other side. Left leg extend back, ground the left heel in, right toes move towards the right side, left arm stretch up. So make sure the left foot is grounding down once again. This is quite intense for you, left hand to your hips, so you can relax the left shoulder. Otherwise, keep your left hand extending up, set the left shoulder over the right, or strip the left arm over the ear, finding that full length, left fingertips reaching to the front of the mat, as your right, right foot presses against the floor. That left foot, that's, that extended leg, is pressing firmly down to the mat. We stay here for three, four, two, Last one. Place your left hand in your hip for support. Start to lift the right hand up using a bit of that quad lift the torso up. And then both hands up to the sky as you inhale. Left hand down to the left leg. And then start to side stretch towards the left side. Finding the right side, form your right hip flexors all the way to the right shoulder blade, to the right wrist, stretching and breathe. For another three. Left fingertips light, try not to press too much pressure. You want to keep that left leg nice and soft for two. Plus, one more breath. Good, and then lift the torso up, both hands up. Then hug the belly in, activate your core. Press the left foot down as you lean forward. So the more you lean forward, the more you have to counter. So that left leg has to engage a lot to squeeze the left knee cap. Keep that left foot nice and tight. As you lean forward, and maybe this side you can't go quite as far, that's alright. Stay where you can for the last three, for the last two, bicep squeeze into the yards. Then finally look down, right hand down, right underneath the shoulder, and lift the left leg up. Then gaze at your left toes, just make sure the toes are not pointing. They are nice and engaged, flex them towards your face, and then kick up. Take one day that ankle. Your knee and hip is one nice long straight line. And of course, if you can kick up even higher, go for it. And I can feel mine shaking already. So wherever you are, wherever the left leg is, keep them lifting for three or two. Kick up one more. Good, release, left hand down. Bring everything back towards the center. And we'll meet in downward facing dog. Lift the knee, thighs back. Start to walk up your dog. Bending your knees, one another. Shake out the hips. 
in your downward dog, make sure the palms are shoulder width apart. Again, bending the knees if you need to lift the heel bone nice and high. From here, bring the big toes together to touch. High in a tippy toe, as you lift the right leg to the sky, come into a three-legged dog. And we'll use some momentum to swing the right foot forward. In between your palms, again, as far as you can. Ground the left heel down as we did before. Come into our warrior two. Sweep your arms back, left hand back, right hand forward. So think about your alignment, heel to heel, or the front heel in line with the arch of the back foot. So if you have a line on your mat, that already helps you guide your alignment. Keep your right toes pointing forward and sing the hips down. Pushing the right side away. Flip your right palm, inhale, lean forward. You're going to re back. So left hand to the left side, once again, right arm stretch back. Set up like a similar shape to what we did earlier with the right knee down. So continue to get that nice long stretch on the right side, but keep the right knee bending instead of straightening. So keep it bent, hips are low. Come all the way back up, inhale, breathe, right arm on your thigh. And swing the left arm over the ear this time. And this might feel really good, right, if you're just sinking down. And you might find that neck starts to contract. So think about lengthening, lift the right shoulder away from the young. Holding here just for three, four, two. Last one, come all the way back up. Straighten the right side this time, coming to triangle pose. So wriggle the back foot closer. Shorter stunts will be slightly easier to hold. Lean forward to your maximum, right fingertips forward, left hip back. Place your right hand on your shin, left hand up. Now instead of dumping weight down, take a block. A block might be easier. Put a block inside next to your right um, ankle, hand on the block, and then continue to lift through the left fingers. Perhaps chin over the left shoulder, look to your left thumb. And for your block setting, if you have pretty long arms like me, maybe the highest block doesn't work. Coming to a medium setup that helps you to really lengthen your hips, your chest. Hold it here. Just take that one more breath. Good. And then whenever you are ready, slowly release, left hand on your hip, come all the way up. Coming to Skandasana, hands on your hips first, bend your left knee, that's the back knee, bend towards the back of your mat as you lift the right foot off, hands onto the floor to support you first. So see where you are as you lower the hips down, and if you need to, hands to your heart center. If this doesn't work, you can't really lower the left heel down, bring your hands onto the mat, Continue to squeeze through the left hip flexor. Hold it here just for three. Use that left tricep. Push the left knee open as we work on opening the inner groin and your thighs for two. Last one. Walk your hands back forward to the front of your mat. Remove the block aside for now. Step the right foot big step back. Downward facing dog as we adjust. Roll forward to plank pose. High up tippy toe. Shoulders over the wrist. Knees, chest, chin, or your half, chuck the round as you exhale. And tuck your toes, roll forward, take that high cobra pose, straightening the arms as much as you can, lower the shoulders down, looking up, downward facing dog as you exhale. Alright, we'll change side now, big toes to touch. Lift the left leg up. Hop high on the bottom, deep toes. Swing the left leg forward. From here, right heels driving down. Swivel it down and then both hands open, warrior two on the left side. Stretch the fingers in opposite direction. Again, wriggle out your feet. Nice and strong stance in this warrior two. Flip your left palm, inhale, lean forward. Exhale two, reverse. Right fingertips on the right leg. Continue to lower the hips. Feel your left thigh working hard. Roll the top shoulder open. And let's inhale, come back up to center. Left elbow on your thigh. Right arm sweep over the ear. Instead of the torso facing down, think about opening the torso to the right side of the knee. Again, same thing, back foot is pressing down nice and low. We'll just hold here for three. Relax the left shoulder for two. Last one. Come all the way back up. Hands on your hips as you straighten the left back. Again, bring the back foot one or two steps closer. So heel toe then close up. Once you have that space, straighten the arms, lean forward for our triangle, trikonasana pose, left hand to the shin, right arm up to the sky. If you took blocks earlier, same thing, take that block, put them next to your ankle, 
and then get that nice opening in the chest. Continue to roll the right shoulder back. Feel the chest down to your hips are facing the same direction, which is the right side of your room, your own space. Maybe look up to the right thumb. If it's too much for your neck, feel free to just look down. So your choice here. Taking the option that your body is telling you to do. Holding here. Just take that one more breath. Right hand on your hip. And then lift yourself back up. We're going to bring your hands to heart center for now. Start to bring the right toes to the back and bend the right knee. At some point, if you need to lower your hands to the mat, go for it. Widen out your stance as you lift the back, uh, the front foot up. Not the back, the back foot stays down, the front foot stays up. Hands to your heart center. And of course, you can always take one hand first. See where this side takes you. And you never know, right? Because this side could be more flexible for you. Just want to explore. Your hips almost coming down so much that it touches the right ankle. And again, using the right elbow to push the right knee away. Chest is nice and long. Keep stretching through the back of the neck, through the crown of the head. Take one more breath here. And then when you're ready, push into the right foot. Lift yourself back to the front of the mat. Locks aside. Step back, downward facing dog. Flowing through vinyasa, lean forward to plank. Option, knees, chest, chin, half. Or full chaturanga with the knees away from the mat, like a push up. But then untuck your toes, roll forward, take that high cobra. Downward facing dog, as you well. Once you're in downward dog, one breath, inhale, allow the chest to lift and rise. Use your exhale to sink the chest down into the back of the mat. Let's do one more, just like that. Inhale and exhale. Bring the big toes to touch. From here, high on your tippy toe. Right leg back up to the sky. Left heel really lifting all the way up. Imagine you're trying to split your legs open. Then step the right foot forward between your palms. Come up to high lunge. So exactly the same as low lunge, just that the back knee is lifted off. For a start, let's bring your hands to your heart center. Roll the shoulders down. Lean forward to that resting warrior. If you find yourself being really unstable, bring that back foot one or two steps closer. Keep the belly hugging in, chin and your eye gaze looking forward. Coming to warrior three, or what they call T-shaped pose. Lifting the left leg up. So your eye gaze is always fixed at one point in front of you. Keep the left leg lifting up as the body comes down just like a seesaw here. And if you have full stability and you want to challenge yourself, extend the arms forward. Take that full expression. Bicep next to the ears. Holding here for three, four, two. Last one. Lower the fingertips onto the mat. Again, if you can't quite reach the mat, take a block. Put them below your face, lift the left leg nice and high, and bow down. So again, play around with the block. If your hamstrings are slightly more open today, lower the block to the lower setting. Or maybe today you don't need the block at all. So explore. Big belly coming to your thigh. Wherever you are, you want to think about one day, the hands walk closer towards the standing foot. Maybe some of that option, right arm behind the right calf to pull yourself closer. And then play around if you want to explore the harder variation, balancing standing split. Maybe fingertips on the left side slowly lifting off. One second is good because the body is finding that balance there. Then eventually left hand behind the calf. So this is where you are, continue to pull yourself close. Those of you hands onto the blocks, stay there. Just hold, just like that, for three, four, two, or maybe take this time to wipe down your sweat with your towel. Take one more. Finally, gently release. Left leg touch down. Remove the block. Now bring your hands on the inside of the right foot. Bring the right foot towards the right edge of the mat. So really lining up to the edge of that right side of the mat. Palms on the inside. Roll the hips forward and back. In this pose is what we call lizard pose. So we are working onto the inner thigh, squeeze the right knee in. And as always, as you hear me saying a lot, the front foot always 90 degrees. So if you find yourself doing this, 
like that you're gonna cut your ankles so really wriggle the right foot forward all right give yourself space now option taking a block once again two blocks will be really handy here one block for each arm you can place your left arm down the right forearm down and stay here or take something more restorative lower the back knee down and just sink the hips forward and down squeeze the right thigh in touching the right rib bone we're just gonna hold for five take a while to catch your breath after that warrior three all the warrior poses are pretty strong so we just want to stretch it out we'll stay for the last two And one more breath. Good. Then so wherever you are, come back to your palms. Remove the blocks. Again, keep them handy by the side. Lift the back knee. Right leg back. Come into plank position. Either come into downward facing dog or flow through vinyasa with me. Knees down or not, take a chaturanga. Inhale, coming up as we reset. Moving with our breath. And exhale, back to downward facing dog. Alright, as everyone is back in downward dog, big toes stretch, left leg up to the sky. Again, right heel lifting up, imagine splitting your legs, lifting to your left big toe. Then swing forward, coming to high lunge. So step forward again, doesn't have to be too far apart. Make sure the right heel comes off, arms up to the sky, and then hands to your heart center. Starting to lean forward. Now as we lean forward, we're just really shifting the weight from the back foot towards the front so your back toes start to feel light and if it doesn't feel light, step forward more and you should feel the left leg starting to engage preparing yourself for that T-shaped pose so when you're ready, keep the eye gaze fixed lift the right leg up torso lower right leg up torso lower nice and strong in that left foot grounding down onto the mat for three if you want to go for the full expression, hand stretch forward, go for it. We have to. That core remains tight, pull it in, take one more. Finally, standing split, slight bend the bottom knee, hands down to the mat. And then think about straightening the left leg. And this side could be different from your right. So even if you didn't use a block, if left leg is tighter, you might be like, hey, I need a block here and you know that you need to work on your left side a little bit more stretch more on your hamstring and that's what's beautiful about yoga is that you learn so much about the body right, the imbalances that we have on our left and our right so again either stay on the block or start to walk your hands in line with the left foot maybe left arm behind the left calf Maybe the right hand start to come up, holding, play around. Right, that's how we all start. Coming into this unsupported standing split, you have to start somewhere. So challenge yourself. Eventually, right arm behind the left calf, pull yourself close. Otherwise, just stay in a nice hamstring stretch, hands onto the block, bowing down. We just have another three. Make sure you're breathing, don't hold your breath for two. Last one, finally, release right leg back, bring your hands inside of the left foot, left foot wriggle them out to the left side, so drive the hips down, then rock forward and back just to shake things out. Then whenever you're ready, just checking your alignment, your left toes are pointing forward, hands are by the side of your foot, take your block, just next to your foot again, same thing, maybe right elbow comes down. The left elbow may or may not come down, so it might be floating just like me, as long as you don't open the left knee out. You want to keep the left knee hugging in, then the left forearm will slowly make its way down. And maybe it's not today, maybe the next practice, or maybe the next week's practice. So decide if you want to lower the right knee down, and just chill out here, softening the shoulders, the fingers, we'll just hold for five. We'll hold for four. We'll hold for three. Last two. If you have space, roll that thigh bone even closer towards the mat. Take one more. And 
finally release back to your palms. Walk the side. Downward facing dog. Alright, just one more vinyasa here. I'll stay in downward dog, your choice. Lean forward to plank if you're doing vinyasa. Knees down or not, take that chaturanga. Landing the elbow slightly, it doesn't have to be all the way. Then roll forward, take that cobra, thighs down, opening up the torso. Downward facing up. Alright, we're coming to our big pose for now. So big toes attach. Heels up once again, right leg up to the sky. Inhale. Use your exhale to step forward outside of the right palm. And then ground the left heel down. Keep the right hand inside of the right foot, left arm up. Now we did this earlier with the right elbow onto the thigh. Now the right hand stays down. Then you try to come onto your right fingertips, so lift through your left hand. Finding the space between the right rib and your right thigh. So this has a little bit more core engagement. Continue to squeeze the glutes together, opening up the chest. Maybe sweep the left arm over the ear again, full extension in the left side of the body. Take the one more breath here. Ground down firmly to your feet, lift yourself all the way up. Warrior two, straighten the right thigh. Coming to reverse triangle pose, left hand down, right arm sweep over the ear. After compressing the right side of the body, you just want to stretch this part out. When you're ready, lift yourself back up, hands onto your hips. Now coming to your half moon pose. So bring the back foot closer, take your blocks, take the higher set up. Think about your block towards the right corner of the mat, so it's away from your foot. Left foot is closer, continue to keep your eye gaze down, then lean forward. Think about warrior three. The difference between half moon and warrior three is that the hips are open. So your hips are over to the left side, lift through the left leg. Remember we did this in baby half moon variation with the right knee down. Exactly the same thing now. Keep your eye gaze as is. Left hand up to the sky. Option sweep the left arm over the ear. Now when you're ready to challenge yourself, if you feel really balanced here, start to slowly, slowly shift the eye gaze towards the left side. So think about body and hips are open to the left side of the mat instead of facing down. We have just three. There's so much weight on the bottom leg. So can you kick the left leg up higher for two? One last breath. Then when you're ready, left hand back to your hip. Bend the right knee, left leg touch down. Ball pins back up, back to warrior two. Then cut with your hands forward. Step the right leg back. Now it facing down. That was a short one. Nice and easy. On your left side, exactly the same thing. So lift the heels up, left leg back up to the sky, inhale. When you exhale, swing the left foot outside of the left palm. Ground the right heel down. Left hand stays down, right arm up to the sky. Your left palm start to float to your left fingertips. Pull the belly in, lift to the right side of the body. Just staying here. Keep your left tricep, same thing, push it away. So the left knee has to cave inwards. You want to keep the hips open. Breathe for three. Breathe for two. Last one. Ground down into your feet. Come up to warrior two. Straighten the left thigh. Lean back to that reverse triangle pose. Squeeze the inner thighs together to maintain stability. Hold it. Just one more. Get that full body stretch stretch. The angle of your half moon as you come back up. Right hand on your hip. Bend the left knee for now so you can take a block. Put them, wriggle the left foot closer. Get a nice distance. Then when you're ready, bring the back foot closer. Closer and start to lift the right foot up. Try not to let the right leg be limp. Otherwise, a lot of weight onto that left leg. So flex it. Lift it up. So less weight bearing on the standing leg. More space to turn the body to the right side. When you're ready, right arm up. Stacking the shoulders over one another. Maybe starting to turn the eye gaze to the right side. And then smile, relax those facial muscles. Holding here for three. We hold for two. Can you squeeze the right foot and kick up just that one more? Good job. Slowly release that right foot back down. 
effect to that warrior to inhale and exhale, cartwheel your hands back down. Step the left foot back, downward facing dog. Then bring your feet together to touch, lift the heels up, bend your knees, look forward. Now you have the option, simply step outside of your palms, right foot outside, left foot outside or hop forward. Come into Malasana squat, our yogi squat. So, hands to heart centre. Keep your heels down. This could be quite intense for some of us, so you might want to take a block. And then simply just sit on the block. Right? It might be easier. And so that you have time to focus, elbows, push the thighs away. Hands come down. Right? So, again, we all are different. Our body anatomy is different. So take the option that suits you. If the block is not for you today, you think, hey, I feel pretty good. Keep the toes up. Keep pushing it away. Hands to heart center. Lift through the chest. Stay here. Weight is on your heels, not so much your toes. So your toes should be free like me. So wriggle them about. Allow these hips to open. Take this time to breathe. The only hold, take that one more breath. Now you have the option to just stay here. Or we can try. The keyword is to try. Um, crow pose. That's almost like the foundation of arm balances. Now, of course, if you're a beginner, feel free to just stay here, chill out. Or if you want to try, if you're ready, why not? Palms shoulder width, bring your feet back, lift the heels up. Knees either wrap around the tricep, it will be easier, or knees on the tricep. You have to look forward. Now, think about that chaturanga, that push up that we did, right? Instead of elbows opening up, you want the elbows to be pointing to the back. So look forward. And maybe all you do is to rock forward and back, right? So as a beginner, this could be good enough. This is actually quite intense. At one point, maybe you hold. And maybe you try one foot up at a time. It could be your right or left, whichever you prefer. Then the other leg, slowly one day, you hop up, one inch off, eventually four feet off. Wherever you are, as you continue to try, if you only have one foot off, change side now, so change the other foot, the not so natural side, right? Continue to play around, we just have that two, and one, wherever you are, lower the feet back, outer edges of your mat, swing the bum down, hands to heart center, joining everyone back in Malasana squat, lengthen the spine, widening the collarbones, we take one more breath. Slowly release, palms down, step back, plank position. Then whenever you're ready, downward dog, I'll take one last vinyasa here, chaturanga. Big inhale, roll forward. Long exhale, downward facing dog. One breath together in downward dog, inhale. When you use your exhale, press the palms forward as you sing the chest back. Very slowly, lean forward plank. Lower the knees down. Come back to tabletop position. Back to where we started. So from here, just want to um, stretch out the shoulders. So come into a gentle twist. Lift your right arm up to the sky. Then as you exhale, thread the needle. Right arm underneath the left. Go all the way. Rest the right cheek down, right shoulder down. Again, if this doesn't work for you, taking a block. Place the block just underneath the right cheek. And that will be nicer. And you should feel a nice stretch already, wherever you are. Keep the left palm close to you for support. If you feel okay, option to stretch the left hand forward. Stretch the left hand forward, opening up the left shoulder. Option to stay here. Or take the last option. Left arm back up to the sky. And take a half bind, left hand reach behind your back. Find your right inner thigh. So you're stretching both shoulders, the right outer shoulder, and then taking that left side internal rotation. We have just three. We have just two. One last. Very slowly release the left palm back down next to your face. Push into your left palm, inhale, right arm back up to the sky. Exhale, right palm back down. Changing side. Left arm up to the sky, inhale. Exhale, thread underneath the right, go all the way. 
press the left cheek down, readjust on the side. So where we are stretching is really your left delt right. You can just stay here, pull, do nothing. And this is good enough. Sometimes less is more, right? Or right hand start to walk forward. Again, if stretching forward doesn't work for you today, not in your favor, come back. Regress that. Take that first option. Our last one here, half bind, right arm stretch up. Right arm going behind your lower back. Find your left inner thigh. Then open up. Hold. Breathe. And the more you hold, the longer it is. When you release, the blood flows back to where you've just compressed. It's going to feel really good. But only if you hold here. No more fidgeting. For three. For two. Last one. Finally, wherever the right arm is, release them back next to your face. Push into the right palm. Inhale, left arm back up to the side. Left arm back down. Alright, that's it. Sit back onto your heels. And then from here, take a nice long side stretch here. Right hand next to your hip. Left arm up as you can. Then walk your right hand away from you as you take a nice long side stretch to the right side. Press into your right palm. Stay here, continue to stretch. Those of you looking for something more, shift the hips a little bit more to the left side. Get a deeper side stretch. Be happy. Easy here. Less muscular engagement. And then slowly push into the bottom hand. Lift yourself back up. Inhale, both arms stretch up. And left hand coming down next to your hips. Side stretch towards the left side. Walk the left fingertips away. At one point, left arm comes down. Fully stretching the right side. And again, if you did that earlier, shift the hips a little bit more to the right side. Deepening this side stretch for three. Relax the shoulders back into the sockets. And whenever you are ready, take your time. Push into the bottom hand. Both hands back up to the sky. Look up, palms to touch. Lengthen from the sides of the body. Feeling lightness in your lower belly, down to your tailbone. Release hands to your heart center, find the touch. Give yourself a few moments here to be collect. Give yourself a small smile. Appreciating your body and breath for carrying you through the past few moments of your class, of your own practice, on your own mat, in your own space. Blink your eyes open. Namaste. Alright, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had a good sweat. I know I did. Um, so wipe down your sweat. Go ahead, try um, the sequence again until you can get those poses nice and easy. And make sure you're not holding your breath in any one of those poses. And that's where you know um, your body is getting stronger, you're breathing easier, and you can progress on to the next sequence or to the next pose. Alright, thank you so much once again. Have a good rest and goodbye.